Shut up and sit down. Hi, I'm PJ Matavish. Welcome back to another DC story. So we're continuing on with section A from 2017, and this one is question A3. So the design for Patio Fireplace based on a regular solid is shown. Drawn shows the elevation plan of a similar solid. All faces are regular pentagons. So using the given X1, uh, Y1, draw the true length of the line of intersection between surfaces A and B, and hence determine the heater angle between the two surfaces. And B, determine the center point of surface of uh, face B in plan and draw the projections of a sphere which rests on the horizontal plane as also tangent contact with the center point of face B. So uh, at first look I thought there was a bit of a, a projection system question but it's more um, it is a quarter geometry question with a bit of, or even surface geometry question with a sneaky bit of a bit of uh, solids and contact thrown in as well. Uh, so let's start off with A and so they've already given you your X1, Y1 and they're you know with the I might shade these in even a little bit now just because it's a will need it for a part B. When the shading surface is a small bit just so you tell which one is A and which one is B. Our line section is clearly this line here because it is common to both which is represented by the same line here. That's why X1 and Y1 is here because it's parallel to it. So let's project that out first of all. So project out the base of it and project the height of it. We're going to get our heights from the elevation. So the ground one here is on the ground, so it's on the X1 and Y1. And then the height of it is here in plan. Sorry, the height of it in the elevation there. So that is our line section that's drawn in strong. Okay, so that is the true length of the line in the section because the XY line, or it, it is parallel to the XY line here in the, the last view. So it's parallel to the XY line here, it's the true length in this view. So draw the true length of the line in the section between faces A and B, and hence determine the heated angle between the two faces. So now if you're doing a full corner geometry question, normally you'd have triangular planes, tree points, so on. Uh, in this case we have our pentagons. So to get the heater angle between the two, so to get the heater angle between the two, rather than doing out all of these points, reject them all, I'll find them here and project them back down and doing our second auxiliary view. What I'm going to do is just pick these two points on the ground. Basically that angle there. Okay, now it's not, even though it's on the ground there, that's a true angle between those two lines, but it's not a true angle between the two surfaces. We need to do a point view of the cedar angle, find those two lines again, and it'll give you, uh, sorry, point view the line of the section to find these two uh, lines again as edge views, true edge views of the representing the planes, representing the two pentagons, and it'll give you a dihedral angle. So I'm going to project these two points onto X, Y, line. So you'd have your surfaces like so. Now, for the second auxiliary view, you always will project perpendicular, or sorry, parallel to the line segment of the true length. That's right, true length here. So project everything down the same angle as that. X2, Y2. Now, we got our height for this view from the uh, X, Y line up here to elevation. Now we're working from the X1 back. So to save a bit of room, we could bring a dampen line in here to our first point, but I think we'd have loads of room there. So I'm just gonna get the distance from the X1, Y1 back for this point, that point, and then the two here, it's gonna be a point view, so it's the same height. So the true length here, the line section will be uh, one point here, and we should see a V given as our dihedral angle. So I might fast forward through this. Heater angle and I said determine the heater angle between the two faces. So you don't need to, if it said indicate, you put in the angle, but it's just said determines, so we're just marking it. In. So that is a true edge view of our 
planes or over pentagons and once we see the two of them as edge views we get through the heat angle now again we took these two edges of the planes to represent or to find our D-drag rather than projecting all our points down to get all the planes. Now part B, determine the center point of face B in plan and draw the projections of a sphere which rests in the horizontal plane and is also uh, in tangential contact with the center point of surface B. Now we need to break down this portion of the question slightly. There's a few things going on here. First of all, our center point, the solids and contact section at the bottom. So uh, determine the center point of face B in plan. Okay, mark that off as one part. And then we're drawing the projections of a sphere which rests on a horizontal plane. So it has to be on the horizontal plane and is also tangential, uh, in tangential contact with the center point of face B. So it's in tangent center point of face B. Now looking at this question, it's not a regular solid like you'd have in solids in contact where you could rotate if you had the radius you could rotate out here to the edge put it in also we need to find the center point so what i'm going to do seeing as this the straight edge here we have an edge here of the surface which isn't at any angle to us i know it's not a true length but what i want to do is bisect that height bisect that line and join it back to one of the diagonals here because our center point will be on that line somewhere and do the same thing with the plan so bisect the height here, join it back to that corner here. Do the same thing plan, bisect that line, join it back to that corner. No. So we bisected the height here, because that line is, isn't it tilted to left or to right, that's a vertical line there on the surface. So we could bisect that and join it back to one of the edges here. Now, half in that for bisecting the angle again up here will give you uh, the center point, but that's not a true shape. But if you look here in the plan, our baseline here is on the ground line. So it's parallel here. So that's a true length here. So if we were to bisect that, which we already have here, that's given us our, this line here is bisecting the angle already. And that is giving us our, center point okay so that's why I told you to determine the center point you can't find it here in the elevation but you can't find the plan without going getting into too complicated these are short questions not going to throw into too hectic that would just take up too much time so that's our center point on the surface in plan and the next part of it then is the projections of a sphere which rests on the horizontal plane and it's also uh, tangential to that point so normally what we do is house in contact we'd rotate around to the edge but we don't have don't have we don't have a regular surface so we can't do that so what i'm going to do is i'm going to get an edge view of this surface so if i get a perfect edge view of that surface uh, with an auxiliary view and i have my horizontal plane which is represented by the x y line or the x one y one in this case i can bisect the angle and be tangential the rest of the horizontal plane and tangential to the surface and if it's tangential to the surface it must be tangential to that center point there so if you look at the baseline as i mentioned there already the base here is on the XY line, so therefore it's parallel to XY here in elevation, therefore that is a true length. So if I drew a parallel view to that baseline here up here to the right hand side, that will give me a point view of that line, and then I can just get the heights for the rest, and it'll give me the angle for the um, it'll give me the angle that our surface is making to the horizontal plane. have there on this auxiliary elevation is that is surface b that is the edge view of surface b x1 y1 here represents a horizontal plane because it's an auxiliary elevation so if our sphere as it says there it didn't give us a radius but it is resting on the horizontal plane and it's also tangential to to the surface at that center point so what i'm going to do is bisect this angle here to figure out where it be there and then i'm going to bring the center point up which is there and project that out perpendicular because that's your point of contact. So that's one constraint. We are we bisect the angle between the horizontal plane and the um, 
and the edge view. So that is our first center line. This is our center point, the center point of the plane. We projected that up. So project that, project that up, find it on the edge view here. So that's our center point, so it's in contact there. And always, if you see an edge view of the surface that your circle or your sphere is in contact with, and you have the point of contact, you're always gonna go perpendicular from the point of contact to go through the center for another center line. So I'm just gonna perpendicular line from the point of contact, call it, give it point P. That's our center. It is resting on the horizontal plane, so it should touch the X1, Y1 there. If we put our pin, so your pin at the center, your lead at point P, and that should give you the radius of the sphere that can fit inside that surface and touch off the center point. So it says, uh, draw the projections of a sphere. It's just a horizontal plane. And so we'll project it back now and we'll show in both views. It doesn't indicate whether you want it to be seen in both views or not, but we'll draw back in both views just in case. So let's get the angle again, project that. So project the center point back. So we know, project it back, we know it's gonna be right here on this line here on the center line. So that's our center point here. We'll make sure you keep the same radius. So that's my center point here. So I'm gonna draw that in. Now when I end up going over this strong again, you're gonna have a bit of hidden detail because it's in underneath the surface. And to project it up to the elevation, just project the center point up. So project it up and the radius is such enough horizontal plane. So the horizontal plane is your X, Y line. So project it up, mark the height, mark the radius. That is your center point. Draw it around. Now in Sutton's context, you normally show the points of contact and so on, but we have that, but this is our center point here. We found that, project that up to the same line in elevation, which was our bisector line here across, and that gives you your point of contact P again. Now just draw that sphere in strong. Okay, so that is the projection of your sphere in elevation and plan with small bit in detail because it is in the meet surface B. So we had to do an end view, an auxiliary, we had to do an auxiliary elevation in order to find the edge view of surface B and be able to bisect the angle between it and our horizontal plane in order to get the radius. We already had our center point from here. So that is part B done, and that's the question done. That's A3, a bit of a coordinate and a combination of solids and contact. So again, solids and contact, a bit of a running joke this stage, it doesn't turn up in section B, but it does turn up a fair bit in section A. So as always with these tutorials, I hope they help. I hope they give you a bit of help for the exam. Uh, and as always, if they did, leave a like, and uh, don't forget to subscribe, because you never know when I'm gonna upload to the channel. So best luck in your exams, and we'll see you in the next one.